Let me work down the stairs. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> nah. What's up? As suggested, we will look into pointers in game hacking. This will let you make better trainers that hopefully doesn't break when you restart the game. For example, we found the ammo value in Shitanyan last tutorial, but when we open the game at a different point of time, the address won't work anymore. But this is also where pointers come in, because they many times provide a static path to get to the address of values we want, makes it possible to make sheets that are more robust. This doesn't always work for all games out there, but it's still a good method to know. Now, join the C Sharp Pimp Club, we're almost 10,000 strong and I want you there. You can like the video, write a comment, I'll take a look at it and react to it. You can join the Discord server. Now, don't be a douche, do not use sheets for unfair advantages, do not use it in multiplayer, you will get banned, just don't do it. All Sweat C Sharp tutorials are designed with multiplayer disabled. Now enjoy this tutorial. Alright, welcome to today's showcase. In this video you will learn how to use pointers to your advantage. So, in my game, or in this game, we have our fireball ammunition. We can change this to a value and the issue is this changes when we restart the game because it's a dynamic address. Let's close down the game and check if our pointer holds. We start the game again and we have our sheet onion. If we touch our game again, we can see now that the fireball address, the dynamic one, has changed and doesn't work anymore. However, our pointer gives us the correct value. We can change this and our value changes. So that's what you will learn in this tutorial and I hope you enjoy it. All right, all right, all right. So sheet engine and pointers. Now, what is a pointer you might ask? And uh, to explain that, I would simply just uh, sort of think about the name in itself, pointer, it points to something and uh, that's what it does. So a pointer in memory would have an address as its value, like we had our fireballs had the value 100 and you could shoot them. So a pointer has its value, which is an address of something else. It could be our ammo. In this example, it's our ammo. And that would mean to get to the ammo, we first have to find the pointer, then read its value. That takes us to the ammo that we can later change. So they can also take different forms. They could have offsets this 10 in hex as the offset and uh, it still works as a pointer so we would read the value of this address get the value go to the next address find the ammo it can have more than one offset but that's where a lot of people get confused you can't just add them on top of each other so you couldn't add these two offsets together you will ha instead have to first read the first address plus the first offset then take this or take that value that it reads to and add the second offset to that value so it's a bit different but at the end we would still have an address that when read or changed gives us the value that we want to change. All right, so that's a short explanation on what 
pointers are, let's get a pointer from it. So in Shidania, we can simply just right click, pointer scan for this address, and here you have some scan options. If you want to change, change them, that's fine. But for this example, we will use the default options. Have seven offsets and hit the OK button. This will sort of brute forcing and finding the pointer paths that leads to our fireballs. Fireball, let's call it that. This might take a while depending on your hardware and the size of the game, but it will pointer scan. And once it's done, it will bring us this page. So I love these pointers. You can see them. They vary in sizes and offsets point to our fireballs. For example, this address, fireball pointer. This leads to a hundred and it points to our address of the fireballs. So let's close our game down, close window, not cheat any, but our game. Have the window open, open our game again. And once we have the game open again, we would have to attach Sheet Onion once again. Then you can keep the address list. And uh, this time we can see that our pointer didn't actually lead to the correct address. So because I know the fireball value was 100 when it was full, we can use the pointer scanner, rescan memory, and use value to find. If you don't have the value or it's hard to find or it's a tricky number, you can use address to find. But if you have the value, like me, it's a float, you can search now for a hundred or value. You can change the name to the second scan. Search for it. And now we have 500 pointer paths leading to this fireball ammunition. Now, these survived after we restarted the game. So let's uh, pick some out. Double click on them to add them to, to the sheet onion list. And let's restart the game once again. Open. Uh, and let's test if our pointers lead to the correct value attach the game again and none of these did they lead to zero when they should have led to a hundred you can see here that a couple of them lead to a hundred but let's rescan the memory again and we have 74 results i think these will hold because we restarted the game two times now i think let's uh, add these and I think we can call it a day. Let's remove these that weren't working. So we can now change this using our pointer instead of the address. 50, it's 50, it's 66, and it's 66. So we have successfully found now a pointer that leads to that variable or value that we want to use so i'll see you guys in the next tutorial subscribe